All right, we're recording. With your permission, we are recording. Yes. <laughs> so I, re I remember, Nadia, you and I having our orientation session. Mm -hmm. And I remember the nobody wants me thing. And I remember that you got, at least at the, at the time, some really good results. Yeah. Then you write me and tell me they really held up very nicely. Okay. What, I'm, what I want to ask you about it, because I've forgotten. What did we, we, I know we did an unseen therapist session or two. Did we go back to the womb? Did we do a specific events? Remind me what we did. Uh, it's interesting. Um, you know, my experience when something is healed, usually I, I don't remember. Um, no, I don't remember, but I guess we were uh, sure we were working on a specific event because it is the usual format. What was the event? I'm somehow remembering we went back to the womb. I'm, uh, you, don't, you don't recall that? No. Okay. It was, uh, you, you, speak, you speak of that because the, the day before, it was just after the Sunday where it was, uh, it was um, you know, you did a big work about that in the Sunday meeting. And I think we met the day, bef the day after Okay, but you don't remember the specific event or events that we dealt with? No, I don't remember if, I guess we, are, we were working on a specific event because it's what you do, we do usually, uh, but I don't remember the event. <laughs> well, okay, remind me this if you would, Nadia. Um, the the nobody wants me part of all of this. Did that not come from your mother or your parents uh, originally? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't remember but the specific event, but you know, I was forgotten at school and things like this. I have just to remind you, uh, I was abandoned by my mother, my adoptive mother, um, my 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 biological father abandoned me too, and my adoptive mother was a mistress of my father, blood father, and uh, finally she abandoned me too. So I was in the at the orphanage, from three months old to uh, two years and a half, almost three. During this time, my adoptive mother ma married. And so the man said, her husband said, uh, discovered that I was there and he said, oh, uh, let's uh, get her from the orphanage. So I was like, in French, we say legitimated by the marriage of my mother. So I was not adopted. I usually say that because it's easier to explain to people, but huh? I was leg legitimated and um, he was a military. He was drinking, and so I was raped uh, every day or every week from the age of, and you know, I had the first rape when I was a baby, and uh, I was raped from the age of, uh, until, until the age of 17. And so she was what we call today bipolar, so she had rageous, cri rage crisis and she was beating me at the point where we, they couldn't send me at school because I, was, I had too much hurt in my body. And he was raping me with his friends. So I was a victim of collective rapes. Uh, at the age, uh, so I had two periods of time of uh, less violence because we were living in Asia and in South America where I had two spiritual guides just to give you the portrait and at the age of 16 after having called for help and not even been heard and being believed and 
At the age of 16, I succeeded to put a teacher to come at home. But the result was I was put in quarantine the last year I was living in this family. So nobody was talking to me, nobody fed me. I had to work the Sunday to be able to buy an apple and a coffee per day. So I was not eating. And at the age of uh, 17, I think from the age of 16 to 17, when I was in quarantine, I, I think I, I was not raped more. But finally, the son, so the, the, my adoptive mother and husband had two sons younger than me. And the older one, which was 15, raped me. And I was 17. It's, it's sad to say that, but, uh, you know, the, the old man who was raping me, um, they have difficulty to be in erection, but this guy, he was 15. So it was very, very painful. But I was old enough to decide to escape from the house. So I escaped 500 kilometers from there after three days being in the nowhere in the nature alone. Finally, the police found me and I had the brilliant idea to say, I'm not going to give you my name up until the moment you put me out of this family. And I finally convinced them and they said to me, okay, forget, forget, forget everything about that, uh, do your life. And, and I really had an amnesia from, from 17 to 34. 34. And at 34, when I was ready, and was my soul and my body was ready, I began to have memories, and I was doing what it needs to to heal that. I had a two-year therapy, three three times a week to go through all of that, and so that's it. I think I was I was telling you a little about that. So it's my story, making sure. All right. Well, if I recall correctly, and I don't remember all the details you just mentioned to me, mm -hmm. but I, I speak to so many people, that's why I have a hard time. I know. <laughs> but if I recall it correctly, your emotional response to the abandonment, the rapes, and your history uh, was very intense. We did something with unseen therapists a session or two with unseen therapists. One. Mm. One. And somehow that all just, well, underneath all that was nobody wants me. I mean, that was the, I mean, and what else could a child get from that? I mean, they, they may want me physically or sexually, maybe, okay, but they don't really want me, okay? I am, I am just some kind of a toy. I'm, so the nobody wants me was your big deal. Now, do I remember right that all the abandonment, all the stuff you just told me was what's underlying nobody wants me? It was one leg of the table, table and, and we were speaking about that, you know. We, you said to me, just let, let take one thing. And I remember you told me and I knew it's right, you know, that's right. It's one leg of the table. So the number, nobody wants me, you, you, you took it because I, I, the moment I said it, I was suddenly so emotional that you said, okay, let's go there because it's okay. present. Okay. Mm. So we did that. And your response to me then was, I, I forgot the words, but it was basically, wow, sort of response. I mean, you, you didn't expect to have that kind of freedom at least, at least at the moment. Now, I don't want to impose this on you. Is that what I heard? Yeah, it was not I didn't expect because I know I know the power of the EFT and I know the power of the OEFT. <laughs> um, but it's time, you know, I know I know the power of healing, but each time I have always this reaction. So, wow, you know, it's it could be so simple to heal and to let go. So what was interesting is that I, I had this sentence and the moment I said it to you, I was quite surprised to have this emotional. So I saw, oh, whoa, I have a big impact here. 
And the weekend after, I had a training weekend with lots of people. And usually when I arrive, when I was arriving in a, in a place, even if I'm very social and very, you know, very successful person, you know, <laughs> um, inside of me, usually I was, uh, I was like immediately seeing the details that people doesn't choose me. And I remember you were, you were sharing with me some, something about not being picked during a, an exercise. And so I was, you know, I was the one, I was the one who was saying, of course, nobody wants me, you know, and it was interesting because I remember we were working about that and you said to me, okay, look at, look at, look during the days that are coming. And I'm like you, you know, I need to check. Okay. Seems to be really great. Seems that my 10 is a zero, but I want to see it in the reality. And I was in this group and it was very interesting because first of all, I was not at all present to what is, what is making me different from others in the negative side, no? What was making me that nobody wants me be, and I'm going to have the proof. But more of that, uh, I lived a moment in this meeting, in this training, where we were in two groups because we we're making a training outside and because of the pandemic, we had rules to follow. So we were not, we'd, we had to be no more than eight person per group. So we were divided in two groups. And so we arrive in my group and we sit all around and um, I belong, I'm part of the group, which is not, which is not a, a, you know, a usual feeling. So, and suddenly the leader looked at me and said, Nadia, don't sit here, go there. And she showed me completely outside at the end of the group. <laughs> so I didn't like it, you know, of course I was. Uh, and so I, I said, why? And so she said, because you are too far, too close to the other group. We really need to physically see two different groups. And I, so I was going, I was a little like, you know, frustrated, like I don't like to be at the end of the group, uh, you know. And after that, that's, that was okay. And I was sharing. And after a while, I realized, wow, I'm not at all disturbed. I didn't have this, this thoughts that were okay. immediately coming. And this time I knew, okay, this sentence has no impact now on me. Okay. Now, as therapy tends to go, even with optimal EFT in the unseen therapist, that's unusual because usually something like nobody wants me has so many pieces to it and so many events and so many things that feed into it that for us to do one session and it um, is not impossible it happened, but it is unusual. Usually you've got to go dig some other stuff up. But it's only a tabletop. What's one, that? One leg. It's only one leg of the table. Well, it's one leg of the table, but that's that's a tabletop all by itself. Nobody wants me. Yeah. I mean, that can't be know. a table. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are lots of labels for tabletops. Okay. But oh, nobody yeah, wants okay. me. It, Go ahead. It's it's an image. I was young to use the image to let me be understood. Okay. Now, you know, it's interesting because um, I begin to face the challenge of uh, studying the OFT. Uh, it's the reason why. Did you see that I sent you today a message, an email? Yeah, I want to ask you about it, but go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's a photocopy of the of the, of the image I did because I was writing it in a in a low uh, notebook. Yeah, part of me. How can I say that? You know, it's like I don't know if you know this in English. Do you do, do you know the box of Pandora? Pandora's box, yeah. Pandora's box. Yeah. So it's my experience, okay? I have I began, I have a part of me which is very in pain and it's all about secret, about my, you know, I, I tell you my story and I'm able to make a conference to speak publicly about it. But a part is in pain and this part is I am... Um, so what I did in this sheet, <laughs> it's difficult to find the, the word. I was writing, I, w I wanted to see 
why I feel so alone. And I know I'm not. Part of me, the adult and the wise, wise person, no, it's not the case, okay? But I have this loneliness. Uh, so it's the reason why I was writing on the table in my little sheet, alone uh -huh. or loneliness, I don't remember. And I was f looking for what makes me so in pain or in emotion. And finally, I, I found a lot. And I was say, oh my gosh. And when I connect to these emotions, it's quite overwhelming. So I want to take care of me. Uh, and in the same time, I have this good news that I'm ready to heal this part, which was hidden from my view. So, you know, I was reading loneliness, despair, um, fear to be killed. Uh, I don't have the color that I made in your, what I just have there, but powerless, especially powerless to be heard. I have that all the time. You know, I have this feeling I begin to speak to somebody and somebody interrupts and they take my place. They took, they take my place. Um, nobody to talk. So I finally see that I have different expression that are making immediately me, making me very emotional. And for some weeks now, of, uh, as I study, I, I didn't have a period of time as I was writing to you, had a big event. So I didn't study for 10 days. I didn't touch at all to the content. But as I study, you know, for me, the experience is somebody very big and, and is, is arising, You're ready to be healed. Okay. And it's all about the secret of my childhood. The, I have no right to speak. And in a way, I'm an incredible speaker, but I, uh, I don't have my voice. I can tell it to you. Okay. Not going to tell, to tell it, to say it publicly, but I can be an incredible speaker, but in, in, in true, truly, I don't have the power of my voice. I don't request help. I don't, you know, so, so I was writing in this sheet. I didn't know why you, you suggested us to speak, but I wanted to share that with you. <laughs> well, okay. So what you're telling me, there is a lot more to work on like we all have. Okay. Yeah. And you were talking about while you are a good speaker and what I'm hearing you say is like from the outside, somebody listening to you would go, Oh, good speaker, good speaker within you. You don't feel the same power that you would as much power, as much confidence as you might like so that your speaking becomes even more powerful. Do I hear that right? The fact is I never speak about me. I don't trust people. I never request help and I feel alone. And for example, I was speaking with a friend and he said to me, you are distant. You have the feeling that your family never ask for your news or, but you are distant. You never speak about yourself. You listen to people, you ask questions and you never speak about you. And it's true, you know, that some people say to, how are you doing? And I said, oh, that's okay. And I begin to ask questions and I never, and I have this quite impossibility to share myself. All right. That, that is a limit that you have. You pro I don't know if you recognize this or not, Nadia, um, but people who have had difficult backgrounds, childhoods, like you've had, okay, tend to want to keep it secret like it's, it's a black mark on them, okay? Yeah. Okay. When what really happens, if you are, if you are free, free, if you feel free to be open about it as you were with me, okay? People relate to you on a whole new level. Let me give you an example. 
There's a TV program. I think it's a silly program, but I watch it because it's entertaining. It's called The Bachelorette. Are you familiar with it? Well, what it is, is some pretty young girl um, is on television and 25 or 30 men come and they want to marry her kind of thing. And so it's kind of a contest and she eliminates you know, them one by one by one by one and eventually ends up with somebody who should be a good match for her and so on. Okay. Now, that's his background. What I'm getting to is this last episode. They had some of the fellows in a round, sitting around in a circle and required them to tell their own personal stuff. You know, they don't tell anybody else. And they did. And she ended up at the end of it. This is what's important. Saying, you know, and I, I'm almost paraphrasing this. You, you know, I put myself out, and you guys have seen me, myself out as someone who's a very sexually aware, sexually, I find sex important, uh, and so on, okay? She has no problem discussing the fact that she uses a personal vibrator for herself, okay? as an example, all right. Okay, she says, what you don't know. And she starts telling a story just like you told me. It wasn't rape from infancy on, but it happened to, it happened to deal with a, she got drunk one time and, and she was raped. She didn't want to call it rape, but all of that. And it's affected her life. And she wasn't really as sexually driven as she puts out. And it was, it was very, revealing of her, number one. But number two, as she's telling her story, you start to really feel for her. You start to really relate to her. All of us have had experiences in our life that may not be as dramatic as yours, okay? But we all have experiences in our life that we keep secret that nobody else knows, we don't want them to know, and we're not free because of it. Now, I don't know if that helps you or not. Does it? Uh, what you say is that uh, sharing personal stuff put, makes people feeling close to you. Is that what you say? Well, yes, and I'm also saying to consider, it's not advice, I'm just saying consider, being free about your story. Yeah, you come, no. You, you come alive. You come alive, Nadia, when you tell that story. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that, you know, but I don't. Um, how can I tell you? You know, I have done lots of things. How can I tell you? I know, I know, I know it's true, okay? But the fact is doing it. Um, you know, a friend of mine called me and, and we spoke about my desire for years to write my story. And uh, I am an active person. I'm an action person. When I want to do something, I do it. When I want something, I have it. You know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a winner. And, and I don't do it for years. And with OEFT, I... I, I became aware that it's because I'm in terror. I'm in terror to be killed. And so all these unresolved things that are hidden are now coming back. Um, I am completely convinced that to feel close to people, I need to share myself, but I don't do it. <laughs> well, and, I, and, you know, and so what I want is to heal that, to, to yeah. gain my freedom. I'm, I'm convinced mentally but emotionally, I feel totally blocked. Okay. You see? What I, what, I, what I think I'm hearing, what I think I'm hearing is this bit about telling your story. There are so many reasons not to, so many weights on that, you know, keeping you from telling that story, fears and this kind of thing, that the evidence for your freedom from all those things, keeping it, a secret, the fears and the 
death threats and this kind of thing. Once those are resolved, you will know they are resolved when you finally feel free to, hey, look, this is what happened to me. Okay. Yeah, I need to be free of making requests. You know that it's so, so difficult for me even to say we are lost in the city and my husband say, let's ask to this person. I said, no, now I'm going to find it myself. It's, you know, it's immediate. So I have yeah, no freedom okay. to make requests. I have no freedom to trust people. Um, I have always this feeling that I try to speak and people don't listen to me. And I may choose the people who are not good listeners, but you know, uh, uh, and so what was what I was writing in this sheet is all the the sentence or which are coming and which are maintaining me in this blockage, you know? I have in so mind. Yeah. I'm, go ahead. So that so yeah, um I don't know, I don't know where we go with that. Well, uh but I have yeah, I, I feel very powerless. Okay. And I, you know, and I see I avoid usually I avoid things. Yeah. I avoid to share and to request because sure. I don't want to feel powerless in in front of people, you know, making requests, lots of people are afraid they receive a no. I'm not i I'm not afraid to have a no. If somebody say no, I'm not going to help you. Okay. I'm afraid to receive a yes because people said Oh yes, of course, and they don't do it, and I'm let powerless, and above that, humiliated because I made a request and a shame because I didn't solve it by myself, and I have always this, you know, this circuit, this shame, it comes back always like this, and even if I'm able to analyze it and I'm trapped, you know. Okay. There are a lot, no. not there are a lot of specific events behind what you were just talking about, the shame and so on. There are specific events that are underlying all of that. There's lots of different tabletops and specific events. What I'm thinking of doing, with your permission, is for you and I to now have a unseen therapist session. It wouldn't be aimed at specific events. It would be aimed more of a reframe type thing about the powerless stuff, okay? And I'm thinking it might be very useful as you start dealing with the other specific events that may be difficult for you. This may take the edge off of some of that. That's my hope. Does that work for you? Yeah, because you know, in the paper you were asking me, uh, you, you, you can see colors. And I was writing some specific event. I was trying to find some specific event to each sentence who were activating me emotionally. What was in orange was what, what was really activity, activating. And I was writing some specific event about this sentence. But yeah, yeah, let's go. Well, um, let, me, let me do something here. I'm going to do something in just a minute. Ta -ta, Nadia. And you know, Gary, we, we, we just had two meetings, but I know you for a long time <laughs> because I practice EFT and, and read all your stuff. And, <laughs> and so, you know, when we had this conversation last time, I was, after that, I was thinking, I trust this man. <laughs> Usually I don't trust people, but I know you for a long time, you know, because I well, work with okay. you with EFT well. for a long time. <laughs> Not yeah. all people are all that are, are trustworthy. Okay, <laughs> so there's a blend in there. If you trust no one, that's that you know. <laughs> but if you if you trust most people and you're cautious about some, that's probably more realistic. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a way of speaking. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, but what I just did, what I just did was I enabled you to record this session. So, okay, if you. Oh, yeah, it's written recording. Well, that, that, that's because I'm recording. Oh, okay. Okay. I so remember click, you did that last time. Click the too. record button down at the bottom. Oh, yeah, this one. Done. All right. 
Okay, so hopefully we're both recording. So you could go back to this recording and replay it if you want to. It's the kind of thing that maybe if you heard it several times, it'd be more useful than just once, okay? And I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing. I just sort of do it and I let unseen therapists just sort of do whatever happens, okay? So anyway, so close your eyes, close your eyes and sit back here and take a, take a nice deep, you know, relaxing breath. All right. And just recall, this is a way of inviting unseen therapists, just recall a loving moment and nod your head whenever you're there. Did you nod your head? Um, no, I tried to. Okay. I tried to feel it <laughs> because I feel quite stressed now. Um, you don't have to feel it. You just have to feel okay. it. You, you just have to recall it. That's all. Okay. Okay, it's done. Okay, good. All right. That's just our way of inviting unseen therapists. She's always here anyway. Okay. But we're not always listening. That's the problem. Okay. <laughs> So this is opening the door. We're going to listen. We're going to give you a little something to work on unseen therapists. We're going to hope you can bring us at least some relief. We're going to put some stuff on the table for you. Mostly a powerless feeling. It may not take the place of all the specific events that we may have to do, but hopefully we can get a better perspective on the idea of powerlessness, where it comes, and the true power you really have. And so let's go back in time, even to infancy, even to the womb where you may not have been wanted, possibly. But from infancy on where you had all the sexual assaults, the rapes, and the many things that the belittlements and the criticisms and all the things that would give any child, any child, a sense of powerlessness. Because these things are coming from authorities in your life, parents, adoptive or otherwise. They're supposed to be sources of love. And of course you would not only get from that, nobody wants me. That's just natural. It would be unusual if you didn't do that. But also, I'm powerless. I'm little. I'm small. I'm powerless. People have more power over me. I've got a big secret. Don't want anybody to know. Lots of things. Unseen therapist is hearing this. She understands all of this. Of course she would understand it. Any adult listening to your story would understand that. But Unseen Therapist has this extra loving power. And what we're going to do is we're going to imagine Unseen Therapist not as some maybe human figure that you might think of her as, but rather as a lake of love. It isn't a lake like filled with water that you could walk into and drown. It's a lake filled with love, which only innervates you. It gives you freedom. It's only love. That's all it is. That's all it is. In, in the world of the unseen therapist, in the world of pure love, the humiliation, the angers, the powerlessness, resentments and all the things that go on with your background are understood. They, the, the behaviors aren't acceptable, but they are. They're not excused, but they are understood. All these various people have their own needs 
They're looking out for them, but whether they should or not at your expense, they, they did it at your expense, okay? And you, of course, would get the idea as a very young child, something's wrong with me. I am powerless. Now, as an adult, Nadia, you know otherwise. You're a good speaker. You can stand in front of a, an audience and you can move them, maybe not as well as you might like, but you can move them. You are not powerless. You can take no's and that would be okay. You can move from nobody wants me to, that's okay. <laughs> I'm not really burdened by that anymore. You can do it. You have the power, but the young you hasn't recognized that yet. And it drags down, that young you drags down your power only because she's confused, naturally confused. So there you are standing on the shores of this lake of love with all the past you have, all the weight, all the powerlessness, all the reasons for the powerlessness, which anybody would recognize okay, for a young child. And now, very gently, you take a step into the lake, up to your ankles. Oh, it feels good. It's cool where it needs to be. It's warm where it needs to be. And you take another step in and another step in, you're up to your knees and your waist, your chest. And as you are moving into the lake of love, all of the reasons for the powerlessness start to fade. They just become things that happened a long time ago. They become things like Gee, I fell off my bicycle when I was five and skinned my knee and it hurt, but it doesn't have to bother me now. Mm -hmm. And as you walk in, the reasons for the powerlessness start to fade. They start to leave your body. And the farther you go into the lake of love, and the, and the more you get up to your neck and up to your nose and up to the top of your head, and you're fully immersed in all this very supportive love, the more you recognize the powerlessness has no place. There's a certain power in here. There's, a, there's an ability to trust others, maybe with some caution here and there, but certainly more than you trust now. There's an ability to trust that if you tell your story, for example, you become more human. You now have a power that you didn't have before because you are free. There's a freedom in that. And public speakers with freedom are a lot more powerful, a lot more powerful than public speakers with secrets and things that need to hold back and limits and all of that. An unseen therapist says, you know, Nadia, whatever you speak about in public, you will become more believable. Put it this way. Believability is probably your most important feature when you're a public speaker. Are they going to believe you? Some people can fake it pretty well, okay? I, Gary, have done that myself in the past, all right? But when you're really genuine and you have no secrets, there's a power in there that nobody can take away from you. Nobody can take that away. Now, spend a few moments walking around inside the lake of love. And as you do this, go to the various events in your life that give you reasons 
the rapes, for example, maybe specific events and things that were said and done and so on. Go by and look at, look at those things. These are specific events in a way. But look at the people they came from. Are they not dealing with a lot of their own stuff and you were an easy target? We're not going to excuse. We are going to understand behaviors. Other people do what they need to do in this ego field world, just like you do. It will conflict with you in your, in your case, dramatically. But spend time doing that. Take whatever time you want. And notice if you can in your imagination, the powerlessness starts to fade because it doesn't really need to be. So go ahead, walk around, do all that with unseen therapists, help you're in her lake of love. And whenever you're done, open your eyes and we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> so, so what happened? Were, were there competing thoughts? Where no, no, I don't want to go there, or other stuff like that, or did you follow along well? What happened? Um, I really loved the idea of the lake. I lived just inside of the Mont Fremagog Lake, which is a big lake between the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. Just a, a humor note that <laughs> I was just realizing the insane therapist speaks French. <laughs> Bless her. Bless her heart. <laughs> you know, I began to speak and suddenly I said, oh, you speak French. And she said, of course. <laughs> um, oh, that's really a relief. It's interesting. The moment I began to enter on the in the lake, I was feeling in my body a relief. And, um, you know, the powerlessness feeling usually stay in my throat, feeling completely like a big ball and completely blocked, you know, so it was really freeing. Uh, the moment the, the water arrived here, you know, and uh, um, it was very soft and uh, definitely I'm going to listen to it again. <laughs> I really love it. Um, well, let me ask you this. Yeah. In there, I was guided to talk about the idea of being a public speaker and mm -hmm. being believable. Yes. That being the most important part of your message. Exact. Okay. Yes. And so that landed well with you because I just oh, all of yeah. a sudden I all of a sudden got that notion to say it. So here it came, you know. Yes. Yes, because yeah, yeah, you know, I was I was requesting help, and people didn't believe me when I was saying I'm. I don't remember what I was saying, but I guess I was saying I'm raped, or maybe uh, they they are bad with me. I don't know, but uh, they didn't. They always were answering things like, 
it's nothing. It's not so bad. It's not so, you know, but they didn't believe me, you know. Yeah. They didn't take me seriously. It was interesting being believable because I need, in a way, when I was hearing it, I need to be believable first on my own eyes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's one of the main, main points. Yes. You know? You know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was good to hear it. You know, it was like, yes. You know? Yes. One of the and, most... Uh, yeah. Uh, one of the most successful women, to my knowledge, in all of history, is Oprah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Oprah is not a great polished speaker. I mean, she's done it for years, but but she doesn't. Her main her main thing that gives her such power and popularity is her openness her believability. She talks about her weight, you know, she gets fat and then she gets skinny and, you know, her childhood and she, she, there are no secrets with Oprah. Very believable. So if she says something, you believe she believes it. Okay. There, there is your model if you like models. Okay. There's your model. Okay. One of the richest women on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and by the way, she still has a lot of unresolved <laughs> specific events oh, yes. she doesn't know about. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yeah. Okay. But yeah, I think this believability, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I really got that. I really need to, to get it for myself yeah. first. Okay. Because right. when I, you know, it's interesting about being a public speaker because I was I was using this example to say the contrast between nobody thinks that I have difficulty to speak about myself, you know? Yeah. You know? Um, but in, in another way, um, when, I, when I speak publicly, I have a great power. And in my life, I have had this place several times. And this paradox that I live and maybe uh, that I could dissolve now, you know, because I, I really feel something different in, inside of me. But it was like I begin to be famous or to be believed or to be known or to be listened. And the moment after I began to, I was beginning to be in terror. Whoa, I'm, I'm now recognized. I'm now a knowledge. I'm now famous. They are going to come to kill me. I didn't think like this. Wait, 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 wait. They're going to come yeah. kill you? Yeah. Because I was have and what I what I got this last week from my from the fact that I began to to work again with me in d deeply with the OFT. I really was catching this sentence and this terror. And it's the reason why I I, I didn't want to write my book because I thought I'm going to publish it and they're going to come to attack me because you you need to know that I'm harassed by my adoptive mother. You're, you're, always, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the word. You're a, uh, a victim of harassment. Oh, harassment. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So she continued to attack me. And when I asked her what she wants, she said, I want you to put off the video because I have made a testimony about being raped. And so I don't tell you the whole story, but I continued to have this pressure, you know, and these attacks. And I'm not so bad about it, but it was activating this fundamental terror of being seen. So, so you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm definitely, I'm, 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 how can I say it? It's in my destiny to be in a scene, to be seen, to have an impact as a public speaker, as a writer, you know. And I need to be free of this part who was the moment I began to be famous and to have lots of public and this part who was saying, stop that, stop that, stop, hide yourself, you know. You know, you said this, I, I don't know the word in English, I say, I, I speak about paradox you know when you have one thing and the other 
Like, I am a very alive person and a part of me is ashamed to be alive. Yeah, but... The, See what ashamed, I mean? The, the, the ashamed to be alive all comes from specific events in your past which need yeah, to be, yeah. be but collapsed. It, it, it's always... Yeah, so that's it. But so, so it's interesting, this example of public speaking, because I stopped to, to, to do conferences and so on after a while. And in my life, it's always like this, you know, so I hope it's not going to be like this. I, 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 I erase always. <laughs> Up until now, it was like this, that the moment I began to, to have an impact, the terror was arriving and I was stopping everything, you know? And so writing my book is the same, you know? So, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm clear. <laughs> Well, no, I, I got it. I, I, what, okay. I'm, what I'm thinking, I have a little personal story, another personal story to tell you that might be useful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, years ago, before even I understood what EFT was and tapping and all of that, I wanted to be a public speaker. So I had my girlfriend, you know, try to get me places to go speak so I could, I could practice a motivational speaker. And so I would practice and people in the audience said, you know, some went better than others and people would applaud and some really applauded and some kind of rolled their eyes, you know, all that stuff that goes on, okay, as you practice and, and all of that. And then I remember standing in front of a, one of my largest audiences, like 200 people, if I recall it, they were all men in this case, okay. And I even forgot the topic that I was on, but I suddenly got emotional within. I always had the idea, I need to speak, I need to have wisdom, I need to have stand above everybody else, and I have something you don't, and I'm gonna give you my wisdom and you know that kind of thing. So be happy with what I'm gonna share with you, okay, kind of thing. I wasn't sharing me, I was sharing my thoughts. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So in the middle of this, I know I was talking about my mother. And my mother, if you know my story at all, my mother was just a prize for me. She was literally astonished at my very existence. Mm -hmm. Everything I did was, you know, I mean, I, that's how I grew up as a kid. I mean, that's a real, that's quite different than yours, okay? I had the exact opposite of that, mm -mm. a real gift. I didn't understand it, but I started talking about my mother and I got very emotional. I'm getting a little emotional now about it. Okay. And I began, I, I stopped. I couldn't get my words out. I was, I started crying I mean, like that. I, mean, I don't mean just, you know, mm. It was quite obvious to everybody there that my wisdom had suddenly taken a turn. And now I was being quite personal for no real reason other than I just fell into it. Okay. I got at the end of that, the biggest standing ovation I ever, ever, ever got. Okay. Because I was more believable because I was real because I was raw because they have their secrets as well. And they're so happy somebody else is going to tell theirs in, in their emotional ways. And this is a group of men who are supposed to show their emotions, mm. you know. <laughs> Got them. <laughs> big lesson. Mm. I don't know if that's useful for you or not, but big lesson. Okay. And by the way, nobody came to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I did I did things like I don't know if you know Landmark and Inside Transformational Seminars and well, I've heard of them. And yeah. I was and I was sharing myself on stage and you know and I was a facilitator for years about you know in front of five hundred people and and it's one one of the the reason I want to have a, a practice group in French because it's also another thing I have done lots of work in English. But you know, my identity is built in French. 
And I know that, you know, when I when I study a UFT, I, I, I translate in French. It's not all the same. It's easy for me to work in English, you know. It's my second language. So, but, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you talk about, I know. And yeah. what okay. I want, what I aim, what I want to, I want to be free of, you know, yesterday I, I became aware of, I have a new family. It's a family of my husband, okay? I don't have any family for me, but I have the family of my husband. They are all great person. They are simple. So they have, you know, this conversation about the meteo and, you know, I took the bus and I bought I bought a, 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 a shirt and, and I tend to think, I don't know how to have these superficial conversations. So I don't know what to say because we are not deep in the psychological area. And I got yesterday that I stay distant. The only thing is I stay distant and I want to be, to feel free to mm -hmm. speak about myself, about little things. But I need to stop to be distant, to put a wall yeah. between me and others. You see, so it's the reason why I was taking also the example of public speaking, but that the way when they, my, my uh, sister-in-law was very nice, say to me, hey, what happened? I said, everything is okay, and you? Very quick, you know? Yeah. And I let her speak, and she speaks for hours. <laughs> so, I... Uh, 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 yeah, I want to. I want to find this freedom okay. to share myself well, and okay. to be with people, and you know. <laughs> That's what you're aiming towards. I, I I'm only suggesting that a way to measure how free you are becoming is to see how free you are to share yourself. Yes. Like speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I have opportunity. I can create opportunities. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> you can start it one on one, just public speaking with yes. part of your husband's family if you want to. Oh, yeah, you know, so I don't I know don't if you speak... know it or not. Yeah, sister, I don't speak to my husband, Sarah, but when I was yeah. when I was an infant, I was raped over and over and over again up until age 17. I mean, raped. You were? No, no, no. I'm oh, saying okay, okay, okay. that's what you might say to your sister in law or something. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, it's a real challenge, you know, because well, when when I when it's a way, I it's a to way to practice. It's a way to practice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. When I began to know them, it's interesting as an example because when I when I arrived in this family, it was 15 years ago. Uh, they were very welcoming, and very open and very happy to have that I that I'm in their brother's life. Okay, uh -huh. and. And of course, after a while, they ask some question about my childhood. So, for example, she said, uh, "Are your parents alive? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, do you see them in France?" And so, I was not going to tell the whole story, but I began to tell, you know, and happily, uh, I don't didn't have a childhood not so easy. And they turned. It's a taboo to speak about something that is. Yeah. So, and what I did is I resigned myself. You know, I was, I became resigned and I didn't speak about myself at all. So it's a, it's a quite, it's a good challenge, you know, just to, sure. just to speak more about how I feel with them, even if they don't listen. And, you know, it's very easy for me to be trapped. You know, they, they are, they don't want to speak about difficult, difficult things. And it's easy for me to say they don't listen to me. I'm not going to speak. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know them, <laughs> Nadia. Um, but I have a a useful guess that might be yeah. helpful. Okay. <laughs> so they don't they don't want to talk about taboo, as you said, kind of thing. Okay. That's them keeping a secret. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. I okay. know. Just like you, they have their own secret. Exactly. It's not the same secret, but it's a secret nonetheless. Okay. Exactly. And a, and a bunch of secrets, probably. All right. So what do I, I do? Well, okay, I, yeah. Tell I me. have a thought. I have a thought. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm hearing underneath all that is people want to be free. They aren't free. Just like you're not free. They aren't free in the way we're speaking. Okay. So obviously from what you're telling me if you sit down and say now sit down now i want to tell you about my childhood and i was raped and da, 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 da. you know we're not ready i might say something like this 
uh, you know, they always say, well, how are your parents or are they still living or what are these artificial mm -mm. questions? You know? mm. Yeah, they're still living, but there's a real issue there. They weren't really good parents. I'll tell you about it sometime if you're ready. All you did was open the door. Mm. And they may come back and say, well, what do you mean? Mm. And, and, and my, it's my suggestion, although I can't guarantee this, that once you have an open door and you start talking about it in the raw way, you're going to start triggering them to start telling you. Mm. They're going to feel freer to tell you, which is doing them a big service because they're not free. They don't feel free anyway. But with you, they can feel free. Okay. And now you are friends at a much deeper level than you would ever be with the artificial conversation. Yeah. So for whatever it's worth. <laughs>